Hello and welcome to the final game of week one qualifiers of the Pokemon BGC World Cup hosted by Victory Road, sponsored by Elgato, GG Tour, Metify and Blue Gastrodon. My name is Jamie Boyd <laughs> and I am here with Lou Chromie for an amazing match coming up between two world champions, the 2015 world champion Shoma Hunami versus 2017 world champion Paul Ruiz. This is a real treat, obviously not just for us, but for you viewers at home as well, to be able to watch a amazing competitor showcase between these two world champions. I mean, those are the kind of matches that you dream of being able to show on a broadcast, and we've got one here for you guys today. Yeah, and week one of the World Cup as well. It's <laughs> yeah. not, not like it's like right near the end <laughs> where, where all, all you would expect all the world champions to be. This is week one of the World Cup, so uh, what a fantastic game to finish out on. Uh, so you can have a quick look at how uh, the teams are doing so far. Mm -hmm. And, oh, it's still still anyone's game at this point. So it's 3-2 to Japan. So if Shoba is able to win, then that would mean that they won't be losing this week at least. But uh, yeah, it's always, always really exciting when it's still all to play for. Yeah, I love this. The kind of competition breaks up a little bit when you can see how close it still is. Um, like you mentioned, you know, if Japan are able to win this particular victory, then they will at least be able to force an equalizer um, at the very least. But Ecuador is going to really want to try and level the score here at 3-3. Three, three, and they're going to be looking to their previous world champions to be able to try and take that accolade. I mean, when you take a look at some of the teams that we've had throughout here as well, there's certainly lots of interesting choices. A lot of Zashin, though, however, and a lot of Reggie Alecki. Um, but knowing these two particular trainers as well, I'm sure we're going to see some really solid choices. Yeah, we certainly will. So it's going to be a fantastic game coming up. And I'm really excited to see uh, these two players battle off against each other. Uh, 2015 versus 2017, it was quite a while ago. And both of those <laughs> were not restricted formats. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how world champions are going to adapt to this brand new format uh, with the two restrictions available. Yes, that's the thing. A dual restricted format has always been open to lots of different interpretation and the meta has shifted um, depending on, you know, different uh, different events and particularly since we've come back to in life events as well with EUIC and NAIC, um, lots of different kinds of trends have emerged. and We have seen the meta shift in different places. So I really want to know kind of the insight from these world champions, what they have deemed to be the call for this particular match. Yes, and I'm just going to correct myself. Of course, it was 2018 that Paul won the World Championships. He only got top four. <laughs> I say only got top four. Only. <laughs> only top four, but still a fantastic accomplishment. And getting then getting the World Championship in the following year. Of course, it was Ryota uh, Otsubo that got 2017. And yeah, two World Champions there. Some fantastic accolades. Uh, you've obviously got to focus on the World Championship win, uh, but there are some other great places. Like we said, the World, world Third Place for Paul Ruiz. Uh, we've got a Japan National Championship coming out for Shoma. Uh, it's seemed to be a, a thing in odd years of the of uh, like 2015 2017 and 2019 we had the <laughs> japan national champion make mm. it to the finals of the world championship and uh, shoma was the uh, originator of that i was gonna say curse there but um i wouldn't maybe not so much a curse a trend that was coming out yeah and it was trend very interesting one of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, trend or tradition, we'll go with that. Um, but I think that's the key thing to look out from both these players we do focus in on that world champion um you know up there in bold but it's actually their consistency that is formidably impressive. You know, we've got so many different accolades on here. Lots of top finishes, champion on the on the roster there. It's just amazing to be able to see how consistently these players have been able to play and that they still are several years later as well. It's, it's not like they kind of peaked. They're able to still stay consistently as some of the best players in the world. Yeah, so it's going to be very, very interesting to see what they are going to be bringing to this match and how they're going to be playing here. Uh, it looks like Paul is going to be sticking with the team he's used in previous Victory Roads tournaments. Uh, he did manage to get second place in one of the previous ones with a very similar team. He did end up having a Frothorn over the Rillaboom, uh, making that adaptation going into this World Cup. And we're seeing another Groudon Calyrex Ice coming out for Shoma. Yeah, I really like to see the Calyrex Ice coming out again here on Shoma's side. Um, paired up with the Porygon 2 this time instead of a Mimikyu, but that's definitely the Trick Room combination between those two Pokemon. Um, Paul Ruiz going for that really solid, like you said, it's a team that he's trusted and relied on before. It's got the really solid Firewater Grass Core with the Rillaboom, Kyogre, and the Incineroar, whereas Shoma has gone for something a little bit less conventional there. You know, you've got uh, the Gastrodon there in play and you've got the Charizard. Um, Charizard's Pokemon, I, you know, I see it on so many different teams and there's always an assortment of the other five paired with it. And I'm interested to see how Charizard's going to be supported by the five on Shoma's team. 
it could, it could do very well into most of Paul's team, but then you've got to contend with the Kyogre uh, when mm. you're going up with the Charizard. And there's also the Zapdos as well that could be a little bit tricky. Uh, depending on how the Zapdos is trained, if they are both max speed in the Charizard and the Zapdos, uh, that's never a fun turn one to play uh, to see which one would go first, because a Max Lightning could KO the Charizard, and in the sun, a Max Wildfire could KO the Zapdos. So uh, if you want to play that game, then you are a very, very brave player. So we'll see if... Uh, either of the, the two players here are going to be opting into that. Uh, you could see the maybe Trick Room come out from the uh, either the Porygon 2 or the Cataract Ice Rider. Uh, either would be very, very beneficial here, especially getting that Gastrodon into position as well. Gastrodon is going to be a very strong Pokemon to bring, mm. of course, against that Kyogre. Uh, you do have the Rillaboom, which used to be for Frothorn. It is slightly better against the, the Gastrodon and because you do tend to drop the grass move most of the time on Frothorns, whereas you definitely do not do that with the Rillaboom and you can go for the Grassy Glide uh, to KO the Gastrodon before the Kyogre would attack as well. So, uh, so it's going to be very nice to see that coming out against yeah, Thomas' I... team. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm going to I... get into the lead set. Yeah, I fully agree with you. Having that priority Grassy Glide could be great against Gastrodon. And take note, it's the correct Gastrodon on Shoma's team. But the leads have come out. It is going to be the Regieleki paired up with the Porygon 2 on, I believe, Shoma's side of the field. And then we have the Whimsicott and the Zashin for Porygon on your left-hand side. Yeah, this is uh, interestingly coming up from Shoma. You want to go fast with the Regieleki, but you want to go slow with the Porygon too. Mm. Uh, so if the Whimsicott wants to get that Zashian faster than the opposing Regieleki, you've got to collect Tailwind. And that would be an incredibly brave play to do in front of the opposing Porygon too, that could very easily just set up Trick Room. Uh, you could be going for something like a Volt Switch with the Regieleki into a Pokemon that would like to be in the Trick Room environment and just go for that with the Porygon too. Only really a taunt into the opposing Porygon 2 would st put a stop to the Trick Room at this point. Uh, maybe a Helping Hand Sacred Sword would be enough into the Porygon 2, but it's one of the bulkiest Pokemon we have. It would probably have to be close combat to be able to pick up that KO. So if the Porygon 2 does want to be clicking Trick Room, uh, it's got it pretty much guaranteed at this point, unless that Whimscott is carrying Taunt. And if you use a turn going for Taunt into the Porygon 2, that's not something like a Helping Hand that could be boosting the Zashian. Uh, it's ignoring the, the Regieleki as well, if it's Focus Sash, or if it just wants to go on the offensive here, which it looks like it is going to be doing, <laughs> Uh, then then it's going to be quite tricky to, to deal with this Regieleki now. If you click Tailwinds to get your Regi uh, get your Zashian faster than the Regieleki, then you could just be contending with that Trick Room. Regieleki could just be knocking out this Zashian with the Max Lightning. It is strong enough to be able to do that. Yeah, Regieleki is certainly a very speedy and powerful Pokemon, and Shoma going for the Dynamax option, committing into it here. Zashian wisely going for the Protect here, doesn't want to have to take that Max Lightning that you spoke of with such formidable damage. And oh. Ally Switch! Oh, we didn't mention that on the Porygon 2. Going for the Ally Switch to just switch places on Shoma's side. As Wimscott does indeed reveal the tour, but it goes into the Regieleki, giving Porygon 2 some respite here. Max Lightning will come out and connect down onto the opposing Zashian, but thanks to the Protect, it's not going to be dealing significant chunks of damage. Will of course set up that Electric Terrain, so that it can boost up its electric type moves going forward. Um, I mean, the reveal of that taunt there, great that Porygon 2 was able to dodge it this time, but another taunt is going to be able to shut it down completely. Then do you ally switch once again, and then the Regieleki <laughs> gets taunted for a second time. So Ooh. we're already turn one into this mind game of, of the ally switch mind game. So a really, really strong play coming out from Shoma's side of the field on that first turn, uh, keeping that Porygon 2 safe from the taunt. Uh, we've seen that the Zashian would have been KO'd to that damage. That looks like it's just over 25%. Uh, so would have KO'd the Zashian in one shot. And now it's even stronger that the electric terrain has been set on the field. So we're still in that awkward position of you need to click Tailwinds to allow that Zashian to be able to take on this Regieleki. It won't be able to do that unless you click that Tailwinds. It's definitely in range of that attack coming out. But if you do that and the click Porygon 2 then clicks Trick Room, then you're in a really, really awkward position. Then, uh, yeah, it's going to be a very brave play to be able to click Tailwind in front of that Regieleki, but it would be necessary to allow that Zashian to do something. Yeah, the expertise of these world champions will be called into question here whether they can predict these moves. The Whimscott does go for the Tailwind, boosting up the speed on Paul's side of the field, allowing Zashin to move first here and go for the powerful Behemoth Blade that's going to be targeting down into that opposing Regieleki. No ally switch here to switch it around the field, but thanks to having that kind of double HP as well, it's going to be able to deal, um, going to be able to survive it. Max Lightning, however, going to come down onto the Zashin and is not going to be able to survive such formidable electricity, particularly with the electric terrain in play. And the Zashin is taken care of and didn't do too much damage to the Regieleki. It usually does a lot more than that. And there it is. There's the Trick Room. That's one of the risks of having to click Tailwind. There was a very nice lead coming up from Shoma's side of the field uh, to kind of pin the Whimsicott. It, it had to Tailwind. So mm. now you get to, to make use of that and get into the, into the Trick Room environment. So uh, really, really nicely done there. And the Regieleki is still very fast and is contending against the Rillaboom. So even if it was uh, trained pretty slowly, uh, with the Regieleki and the Rillaboom does outspeed it in the Tailwind, it wouldn't really matter because you can still go for the Grassy Glides. 
But there is a still, mm -hmm. as we know, the ally switch on the Paragon too. So you know, <laughs> now, it, now it's still in another mind game. You can't really fake out the Reggie Alecki to try and put a stop to it because it's got its last turn and Dynamax. So now you have to call it correctly. Does the Paragon 2 go for the ally switch uh, or does it not? Because if the Grassy Glide does not connect with the Reggie Alecki, it gets off one more big max move and gets rid of the Grassy Terrain, which puts a stop to the priority Grassy Glides that could come out from the opposing Rilla Boom. So uh, this is definitely going to be an interesting turn, uh, revealing that ally switch immediately. If you had managed to keep that uh, in, in the back, uh, or not revealed at this point, it would have been a pretty safe ally switch to go for, but because that has been revealed, now we're into the mind game. you got to try and catch that Paragon 2 with the taunt as well if you want to stop the ally switches. Uh, do you maybe go for taunt and grassy glide into one slot and you guarantee that you hit one of them with either the taunt or the grassy glide, or do you completely commit to one and spread your uh, spread your attack spurts? No, the Ranger Boom is not even opting into that mind game at all. It is going to just protect itself. Yeah, Riddle Boom straight up going for Protect as the Porygon 2 gets up to its pesky tricks once again and goes for that ally switch. We're just going to bring Regieleki over to the other side of the field as the Taunt does indeed go into the Regieleki once again, so will of course fail. Riddle Boom is going to have to take this Max Lightning through its Protect. Of course, not going to deal too much damage, but I think the critical thing here is resetting up that electric terrain, stopping the priority Grassy Glide from coming into effect here. So once again, Porygon 2 just able to outsmart this little Whimsicott. It must be a furious little ball of fluff right now. Yeah, and so on top of that, the Red Hulecki's taunt was gone as well, so uh, it can start to protect itself uh, in case the mm. Rillaboom still does under speed, even in the Tailwinds. So, uh, yeah, really, really strong showing coming out already for Shoba. Uh, the ally switch has been very nice on the Porygon too. It could probably start to go on the offensive at this point, though, uh, because now the Red Hulecki has used its turns of Dynamax. It doesn't particularly matter at this point if the Grassy Glide does go into that Red Hulecki to pick up the KO, so... Uh, you do want to start getting some damage down. I know it's interesting to see what move will be on the Paragon 2, because you've got to have dropped something, uh, whether that's going to be something like the Eerie Impulse or the Recover, to be able to fit that ally switch on. So uh, we don't actually know uh, whether the Paragon 2 is carrying Recover at this point. Maybe it dropped Eerie Impulse, and you've still got just, like the Foul Play or the Tri Attack uh, to be able to do some damage. Foul Play would still be able to do a, ne a decent chunk to the opposing Rillaboom. But really, at this point, now you're in the Trick Room environment, you really just need to let one of your Pokemon get KO'd here. Most likely going to want to be the Regieleki, especially because you're going to be facing down this Gigantamax Rillaboom now that uh, Paul is opting to go for. Uh, and then you just get your Calyrex in, and then you just click Glacial Lance, and you'll be able to do some massive damage to both the Rillaboom and the Whimsicott. That's the thing, the Ice Rider Calyrex wants to capitalize on these Trick Room turns and they are ticking away at present. Paul does indeed get the Gigantamax Rillaboom up and it's going to have a cheeky helping hand as well to deal out a lot of formidable damage here. Uh, it's going to be wow. a speed swap though from this Porygon 2. This Porygon 2 is pulling all the tricks out of the bag here and it's going to be able to allow that Reggie Alecki to go first as it goes for the that's Rising damage. Voltage. I mean, that's amazing. Kind of going, hey, Reggie Alecki, you're going to be in a bit of trouble here. Let me give you my speed so you go first in Trick Room and capitalize on the Electric Terrain in play. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, Porygon 2 is going to have to take a big critical hit with the helping hand boost as well and will be KO, but it has certainly done more than its fair share in this game one. Wow, what a Porygon 2 set. Speed swap and ally switch. And, mm -hmm. all, and both of them being incredibly impactful in this game. That speed swap, that was some huge damage into the Rillaboom because the electric terrain is up over the grassy terrain. Rising Voltage has its double power, so that was massive damage. That is very much in Glacial Lance range at this point. And now that you committed to the Dynamax, you can't go for any priority grass, grass glides, even if the grassy terrain was on the field. And mm. you'd have to switch out the Rillaboom to be able to reset that. So that would be a Kyogre switching in to a potential pretty slow Reggie Alecki going for a Rising Voltage in electric terrain. So uh, this is a fantastic position for Shoma. Some very, very cool text coming out from that Paragon 2. Uh, you've got to assume there is some kind of offensive move as it's fourth, because we've seen three of the moves now. Uh, it's probably going to be something like the Foul Play or the Tri-Attack. Maybe the Ice Beam as well, but what a Porygon 2. So impactful in this game. And the Regieleki has done so much more work than it has ever deserved to because of the two <laughs> allies, which is keeping it safe from the attacks. Because of that speed swap, allowing it one more attack uh, in the terrain, the Rillaboom just has to protect itself from this Glacial Lance because it will just get, get KO'd otherwise. Yeah, the Reggie Lucky is going to go for that Rising Voltage again. It's finding its mark onto that Whimsicott that's finally going to have to take some damage and go down to its Focus Sash. So leading itself in a very precarious situation if that Glacial Lance is going to be followed up. Reggie Lucky as well will KO itself to its Life Orb Recoil, but it has certainly put in a ton of work in this game one as the Calyrex is able to follow up with Glacial Lance. We know this is going to be able to remove that Whimsicott from play and the Wise Protect there from Paul Ruiz on the Rillaboom. But again, I just don't know what going forward the Rillaboom is going to really realistically be able to do to that opposing Calyrex. I mean, the Porygon 2 just was so disruptive, and it even had the audacity to get itself KO'd to allow the free switch in for the Calyrex. Yeah, and, and 
now the Rillaboom has done its turn to Max Guard, it'll have to go for the double Max Guard to uh, stop itself being KO'd to that Glacial Lance. Uh, one nice thing for Paul um, on this turn, though, is that Trick Room is still up. You would assume that the rain's going up this turn. That tends to be how Pokemon are trained. Yeah, the Groudon is going to set the Drought first, so that means we will get the Drizzle. So if the Kyogre is able to survive this turn, it will be able to get some rain boosted attacks off. Uh, but it's going to have to take the Glacial Lance Ends, assumedly a Precipice Blades as well. So now it can't go for the Dynamax. That combination might be enough to pick up the Knockout on the Kyogre, uh, depending on how the, the Pokemon are trained. But even if it is able to survive, it won't be able to go for a Water Spout. It would have to commit to the Origin Pulse, and that wouldn't be enough on the opposing Calyrex. You'd probably need two of them so uh, you probably got to just try and stall out this trick from turns if you do manage to make it three you can go for a full power water spout uh, but no double max card oh. coming up the rillaboom yeah this is the last turn of trick room so paul playing really on the defensive does get the protect obviously on the kyogre but that rillaboom is very exposed to this glacial lands the calyrex is already at plus one thanks to koing that whimsicott and now we'll be able to get to plus two since it has ko'd the rillaboom as well so even though we look at situations normally and Ice Rider Calyrex isn't really capable of dealing with Kyogre in too much of a capacity unless it starts steamrolling up these boosts. It's now at plus two and compared up with that Groudon that's going to be able to go for this Precipice Blades, um, possibly if it can get the damage in the next turn, um, then it's going to be able to deal with Kyogre. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to whether this is an Assault vs. Groudon or not, because if it is, that's still going to get KO'd in the rain. Uh, if the Groudon is able to protect, it can go for the Protect and the Trick Room, assumedly on the Calyrex. Calyrex is bulky enough to survive this Water Spout that can come up from a Kyogre, because we've seen it go for the Protect. Uh, it can't be stronger uh, than a Mystic Water or a Life Orb at this point. Uh, so yeah, oh. there is there is, there is is no Assault vest on the ground. It does have access to Protect, and that is very crucial here, because assumedly this Calyrex is going to be able to survive and get that Trick Room up once again. Yeah, the Kyogre is going to go for the full water spout here in the rain. Does a huge damage to the opposing Calyrex, but it is able to survive this kind of ice water versus... They, they kind of neutralize that each other, don't they? There's not very formidable pressure against them, and Calyrex able to go for that Trick Room once again. So Shoma, in the speed environment that he wants to be in, applying a lot of pressure to this opposing Kyogre. Yeah, it needs to be choice specs to pick up the KO on that uh, opposing Calyrex, and if it was, it wouldn't have been able to protect on the last certain Trick Rooms, so... Uh, mm -hmm. Just needs to uh, avoid a critical hit there with the Calyrex. A very safe play if you were carrying the Protect on the Groudon. Now you just need to be able to hit Press Press Blades. So you can go for a Glacial Lance, single target, or even just high horsepower. That would do some very good damage to the Kyogre. And the combination of attack of the Calyrex attacks, uh, Calyrex's attack and the Press Press Blades would KO this Kyogre. Now you've just got to uh, see if your attacks are going to connect. Glacial Lance definitely will. Or will the Groudon be able to land that Press Press Blades as well? Yeah, we'll have to find out on the next turn. Protect, obviously, just going to block the attacks in this particular turn. I mean, you say all you've got to do is hit a Precipice Blade. It's like it's the most casual thing in the world, Jamie. But we all know that it has been the undoing of so many victories across Pokemon lore. Yeah, absolutely. It's incredibly shaky accuracy. Uh, but then you've got to go for your own shaky accuracy in the Origin Pulse. You won't be able to go for Water Spout because the Glacial Lance is going to guarantee damage onto this opposing Kyogre. And it's got a, got a boost as well behind it. It's now single target. Even though it's resisted, this is going to hurt. Oh, it does so much damage. That's painful to watch. Only 26 HP remaining. Precipice Blades does connect and we'll be able to pick up the KO, meaning Shoma is going to be able to take game one in this Ecuador-Japan showdown. Yeah, that was a crazy set coming out in that first game. And much closer than it uh, seems like it would be after such a fantastic first few turns uh, coming out for Shoma. All of the mm -hmm. techs now revealed. You've got the speed swap. You've got the ally switch. Both were incredibly impactful in that first game. Uh, ally switch, keeping that Regieleki really safe. Going to be able to make th all three use of its Dynamax turns. And then even go for another rising voltage out of uh, terrain in Trick Room thanks to that speed swap. So a very, very cool Porygon 2 coming out here. But we've seen so many foul play eerie impulse sets on the Porygon 2 that you can really, really catch your opponent off guard with some really, really cool techs in that speed swap and ally switch. Yeah, I mean, I've never seen a Reggie Alecki piloted so well in Trick Room. Um, it was really, really cool to see that. But I think if you're Paul now, you're going to be able to call on all your wisdom and your experience and think, hey, what's the information I've learned from this game one? How can I adapt going into game two? And at the same time on Shoma's side, you've already revealed a lot of the cards that you have. So you have to maybe think, what cards have I still got to show? What tricks have I got up my sleeve? And also think, how is Paul going to adapt to this? How can I maybe play a little bit differently to still throw him off his guard a bit? So it was pretty close in the end. Uh, it didn't need to get a little bit lucky. And you need to connect to Precipice Blades or dodge an Origin Pulse. Uh, so it was closer than it did seem. So uh, Paul would absolutely have the tools to be able to come back in this game. Uh, didn't ma make the most use of the Dynamax. You had to go for a Max Guard into a double failed double Max Guard. So only got one attack off. And it was a 
pretty big attack. It managed to Oko a Porygon too, so uh, it was a useful uh, Dynamax turn that in that regard. It did get a critical hit, so I'd have been interested to see if that would have still KO'd because there was no grassy terrain at that point. Uh, but yeah, it needs to probably make use of more turns of Dynamax here. One was probably not enough. Well, we're going to see the leads coming out here for game two and Shoma doubling down on the trick room as we have got the Calyrex Ice Rider paired out with Porygon 2. On the flip side, however, we have got Zashin and Whimsicott once again for poor Ruiz. Yeah, this is an interesting position for the Calyrex because uh, you staring down the opposing uh, opposing Zashin that could, in normal circumstances, just KO the Calyrex. We don't know if it's Focus Sash or Baberry Berry that would allow it to survive, uh, but otherwise the Behemoth Blade should be able to pick up the knockouts. But then at the same time, we know that there's Ally Switch on the Porygon 2. So do you just go for a, uh, an Ally Switch with the Porygon 2? Uh, the Behemoth Blade now goes into that Porygon 2 as the Calyrex can set up Trick Room. Uh, we know the Taunt is on the Whimsicott as well, so you could be taunting either Pokemon that could be setting Trick Room as well. Uh, maybe you go for the Taunt into the Porygon 2, because even if there's an Ally Switch coming out, uh, then the Taunt would hit the Calyrex, and that would be the only Pokemon that turn that could go for a Trick Room. And if you just taunt the P2 and it doesn't Ally Switch, then you just get to stop any kind of shenanigans coming out in the future. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a taunt into that slot. That would seem pretty safe and cover most options. But it's just whether that Calyrex is feeling brave enough to go on the offensive <laughs> against the opposing Zashin. Uh, but the Porygon 2 is not feeling brave enough here. It is going to be switching out. Yeah, Porygon 2 strategizing for later in this game. And we are going to see the adorable Gastrodon come into play. Wimscott does go for the taunt into that opposing Porygon 2 slot. So Gastrodon going to have to take that taunt instead. And Zashin is able to go for the Behemoth Blade. I don't believe we saw any protects, um, unless I'm, you know, missing things here. Um, and the Behemoth Blade is actually going to go down into that opposing Gastrodon. So if the Calyrex has gone for the Trick Room here, this is going to be a great position for Shoma going forward. And that's exactly what that Brave Ice Wars has gone for. Yeah, that was a fantastic play from Shoma. Going for a Trick Room in front of a Zashin with a Calyrex Ice Rider is an incredibly brave move, on top of the fact that there was a Taunting Whimsicott as well. So uh, managing to get the better end of that. Um, Paul may be predicting the Ally Switch coming out from the P2 because if the Taunt goes into the P2, it would stop Trick Room. But if there was Ally Switch, then it would have hit the Calyrex. But Calyrex just standing tall there, just getting out the Trick Room all on its own. Doesn't really matter that the Gastron can't go for any of its Yawn shenanigans that it would want to go, want to go for now that it's Taunted, because you can just go for an Earth Power into the opposing Zashin, maybe even a Max Quake at this point. Uh, Max Quake and Glacial Lance should probably be able to pick up the knockout on the opposing Zashin. Uh, you could just go for a, a double attack into the Whimsicott. They expect the Zashin to protect because Glacial Lance will definitely bring it down to its focus sash and Gastrodon could finish off that last little bit. So a really, really strong position coming out here for Shoma once again in this first turn. Yeah, and Trick Room's up on Shoma's side. You've got the Ice um, Calyrex Ice Rider in play, and you've got little Gastrodon as well. And Gastrodon can certainly deal some good damage to something like that Zashin. Rillaboom coming in, though, is certainly a little bit difficult for the Gastrodon. It's going to want to try and make sure that Rillaboom is dealt with before it has to take any grassy glides. Um, so I think it's pretty wise having that Calyrex on the field to apply pressure with something like the Glacial Lance. Um, it's going to be the Earth Power coming out from the Gastrodon, actually going to connect down onto the Rillaboom, do a little bit of damage. Of course, it's not very effective against this grass type Pokemon. The Glacial Lance, however, is indeed super effective and it's going to be able to find its mark down onto that opposing Rillaboom and deal a significant chunk of damage this time however it doesn't have any boosts but with that little bit of chip as well from the earth power Rillaboom is done and dusted in this game too Gastrodon can breathe a sigh, a sigh of relief yeah that's freed up the Gastrodon completely in this game and it, the Whimsicott if it's not carrying a grass type move there and you've got the Kyogre waiting in the back what do you have against this Gastrodon anymore? Rillaboom is not a switch into Glacial Lance, unfortunately, and it just gets dropped straight away. You've got a boost on the Calyrex now, so if it wants to Dynamax, it can do some massive damage, and the Gastrodon has been freed up completely, and it doesn't really matter that it can't yawn because it's just safe from any of the Grass-type attacks that could come out. Uh, even mm. if the Wind's God did have a Grass-type attack, it's in Trick Room now, so you'd just be able to follow up like the play that Shoma just did. Earth Power and Glacial Lance would be a KO before any cross type attacks could come out. And that was once again just ignoring the Zashin completely. It would have take, just taken some reasonable damage from the Glacial Lance, but Calyrex just ignoring it completely. So, a really, really strong position coming out for Shoma. There's still three turns of Trick Room. Uh, there's a Gastrodon facing down a Kyogre. That's exactly the position you want to be in. You've got your boosted Calyrex now, so the ground type move that it could have access to would KO the Zashin that's just gone for Protect as well. So, uh, it's not going to be able to safely go for that anymore. Uh, you could go for something like a ground type attack into Zashin covered with an ice beam that would catch the switch in of the Whimsicott as well uh, to try and stall out the Trick Room. Uh, but Shoma is absolutely in the driving seat in this game and it's, it's going to be a real challenge for Paul to be able to position out of this Trick Room. 
Yeah, this is a perfect situation for Shoma here. The Gastrodon next to the Calyrex, phenomenal. I'd actually really like to see the Gastrodon Dynamax at this point. Go for something like the Max Quake, down into that opposing Zacia and apply that additional damage, and particularly with the Calyrex starting to get those attack boosts as well, possibly followed up with the Glacial Lance, might be able to get the KO against that opposing Zacia. Um, it is risky though, you don't want to have a Behemoth Blade come down into um, that opposing Calyrex at any point. As well, if you start going for Max Quakes, you can start getting your special defense boosts up, and that's going to really help out against that Kyogre. But we are going to see this Dynamax Dynamax. Yeah, let's see if it's going to be the Calyrex or the Gastrodon. Uh, either would be fine here. Either was probably getting a Quake boost, but uh, given the fact that the Calyrex did get that Grim Nay boost, it's going to be able to do the most amount of damage uh, with its attacks. Uh, so we'll have to see if it is going to be that ground type attack coming out. So if that was into the Zashin, that would still do some very respectable damage to the Whimsicott as well. And you've got to match this Dynamax uh, on the Shoma side of the field or with your own one. Uh, but Kyogre Dynamaxing in the face of the Gastron is always incredibly awkward because you sacrifice your ability to go for spread damage, uh, which means that if you want to go for any Max Geysers, you are just blocked completely by the Gastron. At least when you're in not in Dynamax, you hit the partner while giving it a Storm Dream boost. Now the Kyogre is pretty much limited to just going for a Hailstorm. Yeah, that's really true. Storm Dream really going to be stopping this Kyogre in its tracks. The Earth Power does come out to a little bit of damage to that Whimsicott, obviously not dealing too much at all. But Max Hailstorm, on the other hand, is the perfect follow-up here. Going to be able to connect down into Whimsicott, pick up the KO against it, get another Chilling Nay boost as well, and is going to be able to then set that Hail up, chipping away at the Pokemon on Paul's side of the field. I mean... You're right, having the Calyrex in his Dynamax is just going to be able to put Shoma in such a great position here. You can deal so much damage, keep getting KO after KO, boosting up with Chilling Nay. Um, as Kyogre is going to return with a Max Hailstorm of its very own as well, finding itself down onto that opposing Gastrodon. Yeah, that was respectable damage. That's going to be a two shot, uh, but Shoma just covering the bases completely. If the Zashin stays in, uh, the Earth Power and plus one Hailstorm is probably still enough to KO the Zashin at that point. And as we saw, if the switch into the Whimsicott happens, then that just gets KO'd, and that's another boost to the Calyrex, uh, which should be able to just take care of this Kyogre and the Zashin, because there's two turns of Trick Room left. You need some double Protector or double Max Guards coming out uh, for Paul's side of the field at this point. And even if you get out of Trick Room, you still need to contend with a boosted Calyrex and a Gastrodon but uh, he's going to be able to start yawning things very shortly because the taunt should be running out. So uh, this is a, just a fantastic position for Shoma. And they've still got the Pokemon waiting in the back as well. You've still got the Porygon 2 and presumably the Groudon uh, waiting in the back to overwrite anything. If the Kaiga manages to get the rain back up, then you've always got the Groudon to be able to switch in uh, once again. But this is just a still a fantastic position for Shoma. Uh, going to be able to just do any amount of damage that they want to do if they double into the Zashin. Going to be able to do some uh, very good damage, enough to knock out for sure. But we'll have to see if there is going to be the Max Quake coming out from the Calyrex. That would be enough to KO uh, the Zashian all on its own. It wouldn't need that extra damage from the Earth Power at this point. Plus two is going to be plenty to be able to pick up the knockout on the Zashian. Yeah, I personally would really like to see the Max Quake come out, not only to get the KO, but to get the special defense boost up on that Gastrodon. It needs a little bit of help considering that the Kyogre is going to be targeting it down with those Max Hailstorms. Gastrodon is such a pain for wow. the... Oh, it's going for the substitute! It's so cute and amazing! Look at it go! I said it needs a little help and Gastrodon's like, no, Lou, don't be so rude. I got this. I've got substitute. Amazing tech from Shoma here. Zashin, even through the Protect, takes such damage from this Max Quake, almost taking 50% at this point. The Hail might even just chip it over the edge a little bit there and getting that special defense boost up. Of course, Kyogre most likely going to go for the Max Hailstorm into that opposing um, Gastrodon, but it's been able to just hide itself behind that substitute and just burn through another one of these Max turns. Yeah, I, I'm really scared for the future of Series 12 now after seeing that tech come out. That's <laughs> going to be really annoying and really smart coming out from Shoma because that Gastrodon would have most likely been KO'd to that Max Hailstorm and now it's still on the field. <laughs> and Substitute was probably pretty much the only move that would have done that. I guess Protect would have done it as well. Uh, mm. But Substitute was just incredibly safe there. And yeah, that's that's a fantastic tech coming out from the Gashon. Just all these techs coming out from Shoma. Really, really putting him in the driving seat for sure. And you saw how much damage the Calyrex did with the Max Quake to the Zashin. It might even still KO through the Protect at this point. It's going to be really close. So even if it manages to get the double Protect up, you're giving yourself more special defense boost on the on the Calyrex to be able to take on the Kyogre really comfortably. And even if the, the Zashin's able to survive the Max Quake, it might be put in range of just a little bit of hail that can't be overwritten because the Gastron is still able to survive this turn and stop, it, stop those Max Geysers from overwriting the hail. Well, there's the protect from the Zashin. Yawn is going to come out from the untaunted um, and sub unsubstituted Gastron here into the opposing Kyogre. So it's going to be taking a nap on that next turn. As the Max Quake comes out once again, going into the Zashin, it is able to get the KO yeah. against it despite the protect. 
honestly, just the power that's coming out from Shoma here is phenomenal. Um, removing that Zashin from the field, Kyoga now in such a difficult situation where it really can't deal any damage. It can't go for any of its water type moves, particularly as they are being single targeted due to the Dynamax form. And this Calyrex is just getting another chilling nade boost. It's going to be able to deal such significant damage. Kyoga is able to go for the Max Hailstorm, find its mark on this adorable little slug, and will be able to get the KO. But Gastrodon has certainly pulled its weight in this match. Yes, absolutely. That is that is some crazy text coming out from Shoma's side of the field, and it was pretty much game over after that first turn. And as soon as the Calyrex uh, did not take the Behemoth Blade, uh, then it was in a position to be able to sweep. And you saw in the in the turns of Trick Room, uh, Shoma was able to just cover any play that Paul could go for. And like e even with the expertise of a world champion behind him, there wasn't really anything Paul could do. If you switch in the Rillaboom, it's taking a Glacial Lance and getting KO'd. If you switch in your Whimscot, it's taking a Max Hailstorm and getting mm -hmm. KO'd. So uh, it was just pins completely from that turn one uh, just a really good prediction coming up from shoma that just put him in the complete driving seat and i don't think there was really anything that could be done uh, even a from any player even a world champion probably wouldn't have been able to to get out of this position because of all the techs that were in place that substitute on the gastrodon just guaranteed there was once again no max guys that come out that means that the hail is uh, staying on the field no rain boosted attacks coming out so yeah just just Phenomenal the showing from Shoma. There's, there's no, nothing that Paul could have done, even with his world champion status behind him. That was just a phenomenal play turn one that meant that that game got steamrolled. And that's what can happen sometimes mm -hmm. in Pokemon. Uh, it doesn't it wouldn't have even mattered to what the kind of player was. If you get into that position, there's just nothing that can really be done. And it's just a fantastic showing from Shoma. Yeah, I mean, we promised you guys it's going to be an epic match and it was amazing to be able to see the creativity and the masterful play of that creativity from Shoma there. Being able to have all these techs on your team is one thing, but utilizing them at the correct time and to gain such significance in a match is a whole separate skill. And it was amazing to be able to see him pilot that. Porygon 2 was phenomenal in that game one and in game two, it was definitely this little guy here who I think was my personal hero. Yeah, and, and sponsored very well by the Blue Gastron, of course, as well. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I'm scared now. Substitute Gastrodon, <laughs> I hope it does not become a thing, uh, because mm. that's that makes sense, a lot of sense. I'm very scared, but yes, <laughs> very good showing coming out for, there for Shoma. Uh, able to take the game and at least potentially draw uh, the, the round for Japan. They have now got four wins, uh, so they can't mm -hmm. lose the week. Ecuador can still get a, get a tie, there are still two games to play, uh, but that is a very good position for Japan going forward. Yeah, it certainly is. And it was lovely to be able to watch two world champions battle out. Unfortunately, it didn't go for Rus's way, but it was still great to be able to see how he was adapting in that trick room environment and trying to play around Shoma's strategies. So really great match to kind of watch if you're, you know, trying to maybe learn a little bit more about Pokemon, see how these top players are playing, and also to look at two very different teams and see the flexibility amongst them. So thank you to both of those world champions for displaying their skills. Yeah, fantastic end to this stream. So we hope you've enjoyed uh, this week one of the qualifiers and, and what a game to end us on. And of course, we had some fantastic games uh, throughout uh, this week so far. They will be going up onto the YouTube channel of VGC Victory Road. So make sure you check those out. Go and follow us on Twitter, VGC Victory Road. Join the Discord so that you can uh, take part in all of the community discussions. And of course, visit the website if you're curious about any how any of the other matches went uh, with WorldCupVGC.com. Yes, exactly. Make sure to check out all of that action. But I think that'll be us um, from myself, Jamie, and of course, Steph, who was our other commentator on this Sunday's broadcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and make sure to follow all those social platforms that Jamie has just mentioned to keep up on all the ongoing action at the Victory World World Cup. Yeah, that's going to be it from us. We will see you again next week.